And we are live. Hello, hello, viewers and listeners. Welcome to another Fearless Friday show with Lisa. And I have the most special guest. Of course, I would have to launch this series today on June 1st, 2018, a beautiful Friday with one of the most dearest, let's call him a force. <laughs> Forces on the planet, Randy Gage. <laughs> Randy, before you begin, I want to share a little bit of our relationship and my background with you. So you guys, you all know Randy Gage. Most of my followers are Randy's followers because I'm like a wannabe Randy Gage, right? I'm the female Randy Gage. But it goes so much deeper than that for me, Randy. And I want to share a little bit about that with our listeners and viewers. And you guys, it all started right around 1992, I think it was, 1993. I walked into a Florida Speakers Association meeting. I sat there with 100 people. The speaker said, who wants to share their 10-minute keynote? And in my head, I thought, I better get my hand up fast because everyone's going to volunteer. I raised my hand quickly, and I'm the only one that raised their hand. And as I walk up there feeling embarrassed, I looked in the back of the room, and there was Randy Gage. I didn't know him. I didn't even know his name. And he watched me. And as I shared my 10 minutes uh, keynote and flubbed it up and made some errors, he walked up to me after that 10 minute share and said something like, you've got potential and I want to help you. Let's sit together at lunch and talk about it. Now, Randy, that's been my relationship with you all along. I mean, there's no other person on this planet who has called me to my greatness and been there to back me up more than you. So thank you for that. You know, I, I, as long as I've known you, what year was that again? What did you I think it was 1993. All right, so what, 25 years, give or take? A, no, uh, 25 I, months ago. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't even remember telling you that that morning. I didn't remember that's how we first really started. That's, uh, that's breaking news to me. <laughs> I just forgot about that. That's fascinating. <laughs> and then the other story I want our viewers to hear is, after I went through the stage of realizing I was getting a separation and a divorce from a husband of 18 years who didn't want to be married to me anymore, uh, I went through this process of healing and Randy helped me do that. But then one day I was getting on a plane and I thought I was healed, you guys. I thought I was healed. And as I was driving to the airport, I had a panic attack. Such a strong panic attack that I had to pull over. And who did I call? <laughs> I called Randy. And he talked me through that panic attack. I got back in my car, drove to the airport, got on the airplane, and somehow was able to deliver that speech. So, Randy, there's so many levels of who you are for me. And I just could go on and on. But I want to hear, I, I want our listeners to know who you are for the planet. That's just a little bit of who Randy Gage is for me in my professional career and in my personal life and in my journey of evolution. But who he is for the planet is extraordinary. This is a guy who was a high school dropout, spent some time in jail, was actually mentored by this genius man who, by my words, divine intervention, saw something in Randy, cultivated that, and brought a 17-year-old into a realm of belief in himself that he moved to Miami, launched companies, I think it was a pizza joint was your first place, created success in that, lost that due to tax problems and had the IRS seize his restaurant, recreated himself within that failure, within that space of pain, recreated himself to another business, which he created great success, to another business called public speaking and network marketing. And I'm sure you had uh, challenges and, and failures in that. I don't know those. I just saw you as a rock star from that moment on. He has, I believe, 11 best-selling books, and they're in multiple uh, languages. He is well-renowned across this planet and in the ethers of the universe about helping people take a stand for who they are. And Randy Gage, your name is just infamous, and both of our 
areas of expertise, which is network marketing and in the publishing world and public speaking. He's won multiple awards in both of those in industries. What would you say is your most coveted award, Randy? Well, I think the one you just gave me just now, which, which oh. I have to add to my bio. It says renowned in the ether. <laughs> yes, renowned in the ether. No, that's true because we believe in vibration. And so as Randy speaks, even in his own meditation and his own mantras, it is creating a transformation on this palette, on this planet. And I know you, Randy. I know you like I know myself. And I know you live this message every single day and for that i just value you and honor all your success in the world but mostly your success in who you are when no one's watching yeah and that's what it's all about it, i mean does anybody really care at the end of the life how many plaques or trophies or initials are after na their name it, it's really it's always going to be about who you are as a person yeah, in fact, okay, before we go into the fear, I got one more story. I love these stories. So one time we were, we were at the uh, softball park, and Randy, you guys know, avid softball player, hits multiple home runs, like that's his intention. Who he is is a home run hitter. Like every time he gets up to that plate, it's a home run or it's nothing, you know? It's a home run or it's nothing. So he's, I can remember somebody was uh, – angry with you and and i heard them yelling at you and i watched how you held your space and honored that person to share their anger with you i can't remember even what it was randy i just watched who you were being and to me like that's who you are who you show up for me in the world whether it's on the softball field on the platform in front of hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of people or as a best-selling author or as the top of your game in network marketing who you are for me is that image of someone that holds your posture even when somebody's yelling at you and angry with you on the softball field or maybe other arenas of in life and giving the other person the space to share and be self-expressed. I like, if there's one word that I could depict you, it is you give people the space to be self-expressed. And when we are self-expressed, we are truly great. We are tapping into our greatness. So I don't know, that other story just came up for me that that's just who you are for me and who, who you are for the world. So I'm beyond excited to have you as my very <laughs> first guest on multiple shows of the Fearless Friday show. So thank you for being our guest today, Randy. All right, it's, let's do it, I love let's it. Let's do it. So let's, let me guide this a little bit. So all the interviews, the pre-recorded interviews I've done, we've talked about what it takes to get to where you're at. And if you wanna delve into that, I'm cool with that. But what I really want you to share, Randy, is your next level. Now let's speak to the people who have created quite extraordinary success in their field. What's that next level? And what does it look like to identify the new fears? The fears when you've maybe plateaued or the fears when you are in your glory and everything is turning platinum for you, right? Everything you touch turns to platinum is one of your statements. What are those kind of fears that that level of success will experience? And maybe it's unique to everybody, but I'm sure there's universal fears to someone who's at the top of their game. So share a little bit about the fears you had to overcome to get where you are, and then I want the, the, the bulk of our time to be about that next level for you, Randy Gage, and what fears come up for you, and what's your process of calling them out and overcoming them? All right, take a breath, woman, take a breath. <laughs> you're, giving me, you're giving me a lot, because I, I, I kind of hear three things in that. One is, Hey, what does it take to get here? Um, what does it mean to be at the top of your game? And then what is the what are the fears that come up and how you deal with them? So let's let's look at that, uh, because I think a lot of people to get where they want to be, they need to change their focus a little because they say, I want to be a New York Times bestselling author or I want to be an Emmy winning television producer, or I want to be a multimillionaire or whatever the goal or the title or the achievement is. 
And I believe in goals. I believe in writing them down. I believe in having deadlines. I think all of those things are true and important, but they're not the vital thing. The vital thing is I always ask myself when I'm looking at some really powerful goal or achievement that I want to uh, get to, I always go back to the question, okay, who do I have to become as a person to achieve that? What's the development? What's the growth? What's the changes that I'm going to have to do to, to reach that? And, and to me, I, as you know, Lisa, I'm always about practical application. So I'm like, I'm always going to say, okay, what's the habit? What's the bad habit I need to release or let go of? And what's the good habit that I have to replace it with that will make me a New York Times bestselling author or allow me to climb that mountain or allow me to take my company public and be a gazillionaire or whatever it is. I'm going to focus on the habits because then I'm now I'm now I've got something to get some traction with because you get to then say, all right, what are the daily actions? What do I need to be doing on a day to day basis to get to where I want to go to? Uh, so I think that's important. Um, the top of your game thing. Um, I'm honored that you say I'm at the top of my game, but I don't accept that. I will question that premise because the day I think that is the day I'm dead, I think. Mm. Um, you know, we both have a dear friend, Bob Berg. Uh, I think we both, whenever we write a new book, we send it to Bob and say, hey, read this through, give me any feedback or advice. And I remember sending him my book, Risky is the New Safe and asking him to to give me his thoughts on it and he wrote back and he said randy this is your magnum opus mm -hmm. this is the greatest book you will ever write this is your life's work um and i was really touched and honored that he said that because i have such tremendous respect and affection for bob but i wrote him back dude it, you know don't even think of that because if my next book isn't better than this book, then I'm already dead. Mm. Um, I, I, I just, I remember being on a, 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 an event, there was five or six of us, you know, best-selling authors who were all speaking at this event. And then at the end, they, they asked us to, to do, uh, go on a panel and, and they were asking, the moderator was asking us questions. And I'm like sitting in the middle of the table and I look to my left, I look to my right and I say, every one of these, and I won't say the word I was thinking of, every one of these people up here is living off some book they wrote 10, 20, or 40 years ago. Wow. And they're still milking that. And I remember going home and calling one of my friends and say, if I ever get to that point, kill me. Because... <laughs> That's what happens when you start to say, okay, I'm at the top of my game. I reach the summit, you know, uh, then you you only go backwards from there because now you've stopped learning. You've stopped challenging yourself. You've stopped growing. And that is, you know, it's death. It's just, you haven't laid down yet. You just forgot to lay down, but you're already dead if you start to, to think that way. That's my take on that. So that's, I, I felt like, hey, let's set the, the table with that and then yeah. go to your fear question, which is, I think, a fascinating one. Uh, I think part of the, the, the path to enlightenment or the path to wisdom, the path to success, the path to prosperity is the willingness to keep challenging yourself with new levels of fear mm. and facing that fear and mm. and conquering wow. it as you wrote Randy, in Randy, your book. Randy, could you say that again? Like that, our listeners and viewers need to write that down. That is your first call to action. That's your mantra. That's brilliant. So say that again. 
Well, we all love to get comfortable, even at high, high, high levels, right? I've, like you said, I've got 11 books. Every one of them has been a bestseller. Every, they're in 25 languages. So I could say, oh man, I am such an accomplished author. I can just phone this in. No, if my next book isn't better than my last book, why am I writing it, right? So I've got to challenge myself to, to access that next level of fear. And the day we stop challenging ourselves to greater fears is the day we start moving backwards instead of forward, moving away from enlightenment, wisdom, success, prosperity, instead of toward, you know, every day we've got to say, okay, what can I do today that wow. will help me become the highest, a higher version of myself? Um, and I'll give you a, a real world example. This week, I was, I had a speech in Lima, or not in Lima, actually, in Cusco, up by Machu Picchu in mm. Peru, mm -hmm. up high altitude, sacred valley, uh, 4,000 people. And I decided um, a month ago, I'm going to do, and 98% of the people there speak Spanish. That's mm -hmm. their native tongue. Mm -hmm. And I decide I'm going to do this entire speech in Spanish. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I want those people to know my heart. Wow. I want them to feel the love I have for them. This is this would be so meaningful for them if I speak to them in their mother language. Mm -hmm. So I start thinking about it, what I want to talk about, whatever. And I, I, so one of the things I'm actually doing in my podcast on that this week about when you, you know, challenge fear and you go after it. Mm -hmm. So I start, and you know, you can't rehearse a speech. You can't memorize a speech. You'll never touch anybody in a meaningful way. To, so to do a speech in Spanish or French or Russian or any language, you have to, you have to think in that language. Mm -hmm. So I start to outline what do I want to talk to these people about? And I decide, I think I will set the tone with the story of when I got shot back in the cocaine cowboy days of Miami. <laughs> shot, left in a pool of blood in the street and and what that meant and how I overcame that and how I think that the lessons in that for the audience. Mm -hmm. So I'm like thinking in my head, you know, okay, how, how will I tell the story? And then I'm like, and I've been, you know, I've been learning Spanish with Duolingo, which is an app, which I hope everybody who wants to learn language, I hope you'll pick that up because it's, actually was started by a university and they're using it to translate the internet. They want learning to be free and available to everybody. So it's a great app to support. So for two years, I'm studying on Duolingo to learn Spanish. Mm. And I decide now is the time I'm going to do this whole speech in Spanish. And then I'm like, gunshot. I don't know how to say gunshot. Mm. Um, gun. I don't even know how you say gun in Spanish. I, and I start to think, well, you know, two years of Duolingo and I haven't seen any lessons that talk about triggers and guns and laying in the street in a pool of blood. <laughs> <laughs> well, what kind of language lesson doesn't teach this stuff? You know, what's the matter with these people? <laughs> um, so I realized three days in, I'm not ready to do this speech. I can't, I don't even know the basic, you know, there's so many vocabulary that I don't know. I'm not ready to do this speech. So I'm the two days before the speech, I say, okay, I'm pulling the plug. I'm gonna, I'll do a little opening in Spanish and maybe a closing and then I'll have a translator interpreter in the middle. And then the day before I say, no, that's just given in to fear. Wow. That's just giving in to excuses. Wow. I have to do this because this is the next level of, for me that I need to do. You know, I, this is what I teach about, facing down your fears and growing. And so I just said, it. I'm going to do it. And whatever I don't know, I don't know. And I, I told my uh, Herman, Her Aramio, mi amigo, it's my was gonna be my interpreter. Hey, I just want you there on the side of the stage 
and that I can just, when a word comes up, I can ask you, you know, como se dice trigger in Espanol, you know, mm. gatillo. Okay. So, and I just, and I kind of told the audience that, hey, you know what, I'm not ready for this, but it's so important that you know my heart and you know the love I have for you that yeah. I'm going to do this, oh the whole God. thing. And when I need to, I'm going to ask your mom, you know, a, a word or a, a phrase. And it was just magical. It was probably the most magical speech that I've ever done for any. And, you know, I've spoke to more than two million people. Mm -hmm. I think that one was the most special because they were so appreciative for what I was attempting for them. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't perfect. And I, you know, and that's kind of what I told them at the start. Hey, listen, we're going to make a deal. I'm going to try my best. That's my part of the deal. <laughs> Your part of the deal is you're not allowed to laugh at me. <laughs> or if you do, you got to laugh with love. Yeah. <laughs> and they agreed to that. And yeah. they did. They laughed with love <laughs> when I made stupid mistakes. Mm -hmm. But it was magical, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that could have never happened if I wasn't willing to say, okay, yeah, I'm in the Speaker Hall of Fame. Yes, I spoke to more than 2 million people. Yes, I'm an accomplished. Instead of saying no. What would be the real next level of fear that I got to access to access the next level of my growth? Mm -hmm. Qué bien, muy, muy bonito, muy hermosa. Entonces, dice un poquito que, cuál es o qué es las palabras que tú dices. Uh, uh, realmente, uh, la, la más importante fue el poder de los sueños, mm. the power of your dreams. That was kind of the point of the speech was I would, you know, when the gunshot happened, so it knocks me down in the street, the, the guy jumps in a car with his accomplice, accomplice and they drive off. And I'm thinking lights are going to go on, doors are going to open, people are going to run out and nothing happened. Mm. Nobody can, and the gunshots are loud. I mean, it's not like a TV. They are so loud. And I'm like, and I'm just looking at this pool of blood is getting bigger and bigger. And I realized if I don't rip off my shirt and tie up, I got shot in the abdomen. If I don't tie my shirt around this and get up to my apartment and call an ambulance, I'm going to die here in the street. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. point that I was making to those guys is I believe I lived, yes, the doctors did amazing and the ambulance and first responders and all that, but I really believe the reason I lived is because I had a dream. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that, that dream is what got me up off the street and tie up that wound and everything. Because I think if it happened a few years earlier, I would have died in that street mm -hmm. because I didn't have, I was just like existing and I, I i didn't know what the next level was the next goal the next accomplishment i was just mm -hmm. stuck in my life of quiet desperation and so that was kind of the the message for those guys was because and i felt it was so appropriate because you know we were in this sacred valley mm -hmm. and i think dreams are so sacred mm -hmm. that that's the connection mm -hmm. I, I wanted to make for them mm -hmm. I love it. That is so beautiful, Randy. So I have a question for you specifically on the story about what if you did mess up? What was the conversation you had with yourself that you could give our listeners and viewers? Because we have fear. They have fear. And the power of facing that fear and seeing it as your green light to go. And actually, what I always say, change your relationship with the fear. It's your friend. What's some of the mantras you even said to yourself as you're getting up on stage? I know you're nervous. I, you got to be. But what are, what are you telling yourself as you're walking up on stage or any fear you face? Give us some of the mantras from Randy Gage. Well, two things always uh, get me through stuff like this. Number one is I know you can't. And I just literally wrote a blog about this on Wednesday. If people go on randygage.com, they mm -hmm. could see the blog from a couple of days ago. Uh, and it was, you know, the theme of it is that you can't look good and get better at the same time. <laughs> okay. For most things, anyway, maybe there's some things, but for most things, for most whether things. it's sports, whether it's intellectual, whether it's business, whether it's anything, 
you can't look good and get better. The first time you tried to ride a bike, you know how you look? The first time you tried to ski, the first time you tried to ice skate, the first time you gave a speech, the first time you did a presentation to the board of directors, whatever, right? You don't look great, you know, but that's how you grow. You, so you make the choice. Hey, it's not about me looking good. It's about me getting better, growing. Again, getting to that higher, best version of myself. Mm-hmm. So, so that's really uh, something that I always hang on to. And the other thing is that people think the opposite of success is failure. And that's a big, big mistake. Because in actuality, the opposite of success is mediocrity. Mm. And uh, failure is Ooh. actually part of the success process. Because it's those failures along the way that teach us to grow and learn and modify. Okay, I got to learn new skills. Oh, I need to modify my approach. We need to change this ingredient or we need, need to change that process. It's only when you make those failures that, old, that you get to the really great levels of success. A guy like Elon Musk or Richard Branson or pick other high level achievers, they're only high level achievers because they are willing to fail. They are willing to make mistakes along the way and learn and grow and modify from those mistakes. Mm -hmm. And the wall that protects you, remember this, everybody watching this, the wall that protects you from failure is the same wall that will prevent you from success. Mm -hmm. Bet on it, okay? Because if you've created this force field around you so powerful so that you can't fail, you're living a life of mediocrity because you're not going to be that same wall that's protecting you is also restricting you. Mm. You've got to be willing. So I just say, okay, so I get on the stage and you know what? I mess it up. You know what? Okay. The world is still going to keep spinning. I still got a beautiful home to go back to. There's beautiful people in my life. I'll have a great workout at the gym and get the stress (laughs) out of my body. And you know, and, Life goes on. Yeah, beautiful. So that's for our listeners and viewers right here. It's about what Randy just said, the choice. It's a choice. And I hear, I see it right now. All of our listeners in the realm of mediocrity, now they have a choice. And the choice is, do I want to continue to look good because I feel safe, because I do look good, but that's the the definition of mediocrity, or am I willing to take a risk, make a mistake, fall down, embrace failure, because the opposite of success is not failure, it's mediocrity. Yes, exactly. Oh, man, I wish we had another 20 minutes, another hour, several hours. But you guys can follow Randy Gage. He has a blog, and it's called randygage.com. What is it? Yeah, and just you'll see blog on the homepage. Yeah, okay, on the homepage. Uh, And then let's give some parting thoughts and words, Randy. So here we are. We have some listeners, viewers. They are, they are in this conversation. They know it's time. It's their calling. It's no mistake. They were on this Fearless Friday today, and they're, they got some fear going on, and they know it's a choice. They see that vision. What's your parting words for it's worth it? Like, how can we paint the picture for all the viewers and listeners that yes, it hurts. Yes, it's scary. Yes, you'll fall down. And when you embrace the fear and move past it, it's flipping worth it. So what's your closing thoughts on it's worth it? The greatest fears are what are between you and your greatest successes. Mm -hmm. If I would have bailed at the last minute, that crowd, they know me. They love spoken at that convention. This is the fourth year in a row. They love me. I love them. If I would have bailed at the last minute and done it in English, they would have loved me. They would have given me a standing ovation. The crowd would have been electric. And, and I would have gone, walked off that stage and known I bailed. I didn't face my fear. And that would be gnawing at me here a week later it would a month later a year later it would probably still be gnawing at me Mm -hmm. but let me tell you I walked off that stage electrified re-energized just you know in the coolest energy you can imagine because I faced the fringe of fear and I I stalked it down right (laughs) um 
Of course, and I love what you said, Lisa, to them. There's no accident you're on this show right now, watching this, listening to this. You heard it's Fearless Friday. That's right in the freaking title. So you knew this was about fear, right? And you got on anyway. And why did you get on anyway? Because you knew that's where you were meant to be, that this was the message for you today, that there is some fear in your life right now that you need to confront and you were just looking for a little con- a little confirmation from the universe that you're supposed to do that mm-hmm. so this show <laughs> is your confirmation beautiful and it's worth it and you know randy what i hear too the coaching the the contribution to the audience was the example live and in color of you facing your fears, speaking in, a, in, in Spanish, not your native tongue, and maybe messing up and having some foibles and having the translator help you. That was your contribution, not just the words and the stories and the facts and the mantras and the training that you gave. It was you and your example that created that radical transformation for that audience. And boy, you guys, listeners and viewers, that's the truth. Who are you being for your kids? Who are you being for your teammates, your organization, your church, synagogue, and mosque? Who are you being for your neighbors? It is your example of you facing those fears and failing forward as we've heard, but that example of your willingness to go there, face them, break through them and create something magical. And it's not just creating the something magical. It's the example that you were to everyone that you were willing to face it. Yeah, beautiful. And then the last thing, I just want to share this. I think this is powerful. Randy, you're controversial. You're controversial. You have some haters. You have some likers. But I'm telling you, you have some lovers. And the people that love you, love you deeply. And I love you deeply. And it is so beautiful to me that I have already interviewed Bob Berg. And many times in that interview, he gave you accolades and shared your wisdom with how it has moved in his life. And here, the one person you mentioned was Bob Berg. So what, what a beautiful synergy that you have with the people who love you dearly. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I, I'm honored and humbled by that. Thank you, Randy. Okay, listeners and viewers, that is the first edition of the Fearless Friday show. Thank you, Randy, for being who you are, and thank you for loving me for who I am. Bye for now. Bye, everybody.